Hello, I'm Tom Baer, a professor of medicine and leader of the prostate cancer program here at the OHSU Knight Cancer Institute. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk with you about chemotherapy for prostate cancer today. As you likely know, the primary medical treatment for advanced prostate cancer is hormonal therapy. Uh, but when hormonal therapy is no longer uh, controlling the cancer, one of the options for treatment is chemotherapy. And I'd like to tell you about the three drugs that we're currently using uh, to treat prostate cancer. Um, chemo all of the three drugs that are classified as chemotherapy have the advantage of uh, targeting the prostate cancer through a very different mechanism than hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy starves the cancer by taking away uh, the male hormone testosterone that tends to feed the growth of the cancer. Chemotherapy directly kills the cancer without any regard to hormonal status. Um, chemotherapy is given intravenously through an IV, uh, typically over 30 to 60 minutes, um, and typically every 21 days or every three weeks. That 21-day um, period is called a cycle, so you may hear the term three cycles of chemotherapy or six cycles of chemotherapy. Uh, that three cycles of chemotherapy would be nine weeks that consist of three doses given um, every three weeks. Occasionally we um, take a little longer than three weeks, particularly for patients whose uh, blood counts, which can be lowered by chemotherapy, don't recover in time for another dose. But the typical cycle is 21 days. We administer the chemotherapy in the infusion room in the clinic. It's not necessary to uh, visit the hospital uh, to get chemotherapy. Um, there are three drugs that we use for prostate cancer, um, docetaxel, cabazitaxel, and mitoxantrone. Two of them, docetaxel and cabazitaxel, have been shown to improve uh, the length of survival, uh, lower the PSA, shrink prostate cancer, and reduce symptoms related to cancer, for example, cancer-related pain. Mitoxantrone has been shown to lower the PSA, shrink cancer, uh, reduce pain and other symptoms, um, but has not been shown to improve survival. So mitoxantrone is our last line of therapy. I'm going to spend a, a couple minutes on each drug uh, uh, with you, but I'd encourage you to listen to the entire video because the, uh, the information is similar for all three drugs. Uh, currently, the gold standard first-line chemotherapy for prostate cancer is a drug called docetaxel. The brand name for this drug is Taxotere. Uh, it is given intravenously every 21 days. Um, and I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking with you about some of the side effects that you need to be aware of as you receive this treatment. Um, I'd like to begin with the less common but more serious side effects, and, and these are the ones that you really need to know about. With docetaxel, um, there are really two main uh, serious side effects that can occur. One is allergic reactions, which uh, most typically occur right around the time of the infusion. They can involve hives, rashes, a sense of uh, warm sensation, but also low blood pressure, lightheadedness, uh, and other similar symptoms. So certainly if during the infusion you experience any of those symptoms, uh, a nurse should be nearby and you should alert him or her right away. We give a steroid medication prior to docetaxel to reduce that risk. The second um, potentially serious side effect is that related to low blood counts. In your blood, you have um, uh, white blood cells which fight infection, red blood cells which carry oxygen, and platelets that are responsible for forming blood clots. It is the white blood cells that we worry about the most. These are your infection-fighting cells. And we expect them to be relatively low in the middle of the 21-day cycle. So um, between day 7 and day 14 most commonly, although they can be low earlier and they can stay low longer. 
When the white cells are very low, uh, you're at increased risk for infections, and in particular bacterial infections. And so we ask that if, if you're on chemotherapy like docetaxel, if you develop a fever of 100.5 or higher, or if you feel ill, if you feel shaking chills, sweats, or other symptoms that you might relate to an infection, that you call us right away, any time of day or night, seven days a week. And we ask that you not wait till the next day, but you call us immediately. Typically what would happen in that circumstance is that we would find a way to check your blood count. And if it is dangerously low, you may need to come in to the hospital for some antibiotics given by vein until your blood counts recover. It turns out that with docetaxel chemotherapy, this does not end up happening very often. But if it were to happen to you, um, as long as we follow the uh, established procedure of paying attention, checking your blood counts, and treating you with antibiotics if necessary, uh, almost always um, we get you through the low blood counts and everything turns out okay. But the risk is in letting an infection go unchecked. Um, in the distant past when we didn't understand this about chemotherapy 40 or more years ago, people used to die from infections that went untreated when their immune system was suppressed. So we like to take this, we need to take this very seriously and we depend on you to let us know if you develop a fever or any other signs of an infection while you're on chemotherapy. Um, there are many other potential side effects uh, from docetaxel and you'll get some written information on those along the way. Um, I'll discuss some of the more common ones uh, with you today, uh, but I wouldn't view this video as an exhaustive and complete listing of everything that you might encounter and encourage you to read about the drug as well. Um, so as we think about the side effects that, that occur with docetaxel, um, and I'm going to try to go head to toe uh, so that I don't forget anything. Um, beginning with one's head, uh, we do expect over time to see some hair thinning. It's not common for folks to lose all of their hair, but losing some of their hair is quite common. Um, we um, occasionally with docetaxel um, expect to see increased tearing of the eyes. This is a particular side effect of this drug. Um, and uh, the reason for it is uh, not actually increased production of, of tears, but a blockage of uh, the tear ducts. Um, sometimes we can resolve that with eye drops. Sometimes it requires a, a, a soft plastic tube to be inserted into the tear ducts to allow the te tears to drain. So if you experience increased tearing, certainly let your doctor know. Heading down to the mouth, we commonly encounter um, abnormal taste sensation. Um, the food can taste metallic or different, um, and um, uh, that is a, a relatively common side effect of docetaxel. You will um, find ways to adjust your diet to, uh, to deal with that. Mouth sores are uncommon, but, but can sometimes occur uh, with docetaxel. As we head down to the arms and feet, uh, with docetaxel we occasionally see uh, changes in the nails. Nails can become fragile, it can crack, and sometimes can even separate from their nail beds. Uh, when that happens, they do grow back, but they may need some care um, uh, when, uh, while, that, uh, while you're dealing with that particular side effect. Um, as we think about uh, the rest of your uh, chest, if you will, uh, there are occasionally side effects that involve the lungs. Um, the most common would be fluid around the lungs, um, and that would uh, potentially cause some shortness of breath. Uh, a very rare side effect is inflammation of the lungs, which um, can be quite serious. And so if you develop uh, cough or shortness of breath on docetaxel, you should let your doctor know right away. Um, thinking about the gastrointestinal system, 
Most of us worry about nausea with chemotherapy. Thankfully, with docetaxel, we don't see a great deal of nausea, but nausea can occur, and we have excellent anti-nausea medications available. So expect um, that uh, we should be able to prevent nausea for most patients, and if nausea or vomiting occur, we should be able to make adjustments uh, to those medications to prevent that from happening again. So if you're experiencing nausea, don't just live with it and assume that's part of the deal. Let your doctor know or your nurse know so that we can help with that. Um, as we march down to our feet, just as um, we can uh, expect some fluid along, around the lungs, swelling in the lower extremities, the legs can occur, and fluid retention in general uh, can occasionally occur with docetaxel therapy. Um, there are ways to manage that as well, and certainly your doctor will be checking for that when, uh, when we see you. Um, finally, thinking about the whole body, with most chemotherapy agents, um, it is not uncommon for people to feel tired. Uh, this level of fatigue tends to build up over time, so you may not experience it with the first dose or the first several doses. But if you're on chemotherapy for a long period of time, uh, you may feel a certain level of fatigue, uh, and uh, you may need to cut back on some activities until you've recovered from treatment. In addition to the side effects we've already discussed, in the long term, docetaxel can cause uh, damage uh, to, the, uh, to the nerves. That typically will manifest itself with numbness or tingling almost always first in the toes before it's noticeable in the fingertips. Uh, this is a side effect that can advance over time as more drug is given. So that's something that you would um, want to alert your physician to so that we can monitor uh, how severe it is. Uh, and therapy may need to be interrupted to help with the side effect. Uh, for the most part, we can expect some recovery of the nerves, but the recovery can be slow and is not always complete. So it's important that we um, consider interrupting the therapy before the nerve damage becomes severe. Uh, that's a quick summary of uh, what you can expect in terms of side effects from docetaxel. I'd like to spend a few minutes now on cabazitaxel, which is typically a second-line drug. I won't be repeating everything that we talked about already um, uh, because uh, many of the side effects are quite similar. Cabazitaxel uh, is a taxane uh, in the same drug family as docetaxel. Um, the brand name for cabazitaxel is Jeftana, so if you've heard of the drug Jeftana, that's that's what we're talking about today. Um, with cabazitaxel compared to docetaxel, uh, we uh, tend to see a little bit more in the way of um, uh, lowering of the blood counts. So our recommendations for paying attention to fevers or signs of infection um, that we discussed uh, in talking about docetaxel very much apply as well to cabazitaxel. There's a little bit more diarrhea. Nerve damage is a little less prominent, but it can also occur, so something that we need to look out for. By and large, um, uh, beyond that, the general discussion that we had about docetaxel um, can also apply to cabazitaxel. Finally, the third drug that we use in prostate cancer is called mitoxantrone. Uh, the brand name is called Novantrone. Uh, mitoxantrone uh, is quite different from docetaxel and cabazitaxel. Uh, it is uh, from a different drug category, and uh, it has somewhat different side effects. Uh, like the other two drugs, it can cause low blood counts, so please pay attention to fevers or any signs of infection and let us know right away. Um, like uh, those drugs, um, it can also cause fatigue. Um, typically, with um, mitoxantrone, we don't expect nerve damage. Uh, we see less um, in, the, in the way of changes in taste. We typically don't see nail problems. 
The one unique side effect of mitoxantrone that you need to be aware of is damage to the heart muscle. This is an uncommon side effect, uh, but an important one. It tends to be a, an issue with um, uh, a larger cumulative dose. So typically what we do uh, is monitor your heart, either through an echocardiogram or a nuclear medicine scan called a MUGA scan, uh, typically every three or four doses of mitoxantrone. And if we see any decrement in the pumping function of your heart, we may need to change treatment. Very rarely, uh, the heart damage can occur unpredictably and sooner than we expect. So that's one of the things that we need to look out for. If you develop any symptoms of um, heart difficulty, like new swelling around your ankles, uh, shortness of breath, difficulty with breathing when you lay down, um, uh, faster heartbeats, chest pains, or any other symptoms of that nature, uh, you should call, call us or your oncologist uh, right away, uh, really any time of day or night. So that's a summary of the chemotherapy drugs that we use for prostate cancer. Again, I'd encourage you to read about the drug that we've recommended to you as this video gives you a basic overview, uh, but there's more to learn about each of the drugs that we discussed today.